Welcome to Inside the 18, live from my bunker in Palm Desert, California, for probably another couple weeks. I'm Michael Majid. With me is 99 World Cup winner Saskia Weber, also in a bunker in West Hall. No, Beverly Hills. I almost said West Thank Hall. Thank you. Beverly Hills. <laughs> I got to keep it posh. And joining us, <laughs> joining us today, all the way from, you're in Frankfurt, you're currently in Frankfurt, right, Bree? Yes. Okay, cool. Currently in Frankfurt, Germany, FFC Frankfurt's goalkeeper, Brie Heberlin. Brie, thank you for staying up with us this evening. Thank you for having me. <laughs> By the way, my favorite thing was like when you were when you were messaging and you're like, hey, you're like, do I need to like dress up for this? And I'm like, oh no, you do. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. It, it, you know, it's slowly, I started like that too when we were doing this out of the studio originally. And like, you know, I'd get all dressed up, blow my hair out and stuff. And after four months of quarantine, it's yeah, of like, course. You're, you're lucky I'm not laying in the bed doing this. Okay, <laughs> okay so can I, tell you, can I tell you guys, I was actually going to try to wear another hat today, Saskia, but like, it doesn't fit me. Like, because I, it says Edgewater Castle, which is a, uh, actually, yeah. this is a really cool thing. It's a program. It's a program of refugee players in, uh, oh, in nice. the Chicago area. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Edgewater Castle and Andrew and every all the great stuff. He just got a plug. He didn't even know that was going to happen. He just got a plug. <laughs> um, but basically, because I was going through my dad's. Oh, so uh, a little bit of a, a backstory here, Bree. I'm, I'm in Palm Desert right now, but I live in L.A., you know, and, and coach out there with Saskia as well. And uh, I've been staying in Palm Desert, which is probably about two and a half hours away. Um, and so I've been, you know, trying to figure out things to do with my life. And one of them was to go in the garage and find old stuff that my dad had uh, put away in storage. And I found things like this hat because people kept complaining. I'm wearing the same hat over and over again. And my hair is a disaster. I tried to go without, without a hat today. Yeah, it's just not working. It's not going to happen. it's raining here. Wait, hold on. Anyway. What? It's raining down right now? Are you serious? It's raining. Oh my gosh. You kind of don't look like you have hair, to be honest. I know. I, do you have hair? I have hair. I do have oh, hair. Hold on. Hold on. I got hair. <laughs> I know you have hair. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I saw the hair. All right. Yeah. Nice flip. That's, that's quarantine hair right there. Like there that's you go. straight Absolutely. up. <laughs> straight up what that is uh speaking of quarantine guys you guys all in quarantine have been absolutely incredible because you guys have been rating reviewing and subscribing on the podcast it's been absolutely phenomenal and again it literally takes 10 seconds and really brightens all of our days to be honest with you so i just wanted to give a big shout out to uh, uh monmouth goalkeeper coach jamie cleland for leaving a really cool review today that uh i'm not going to read on the air right now because we have brie and can you say that again can you say the name can of that school again monmouth Mon you Mouth? said Monmouth. It's Monmouth, Mon but it's okay. I, I have to. I'm from New Jersey. I'm like, you just destroyed the name of that school right there. And that, guy, okay. that, that guy's literally deleting his review right now as we speak. <laughs> no, yeah, he's probably happy a Rutgers girl just had not said it, like, fixed you on it. So. <laughs> By the way, by the way, for all of you guys who've been uh, tuning in, waiting for Omar Zini to make his appearance, he just texted five minutes, so he will be on in five minutes. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna get this going while we're waiting for Omar. Anyway, today's guy's topic is scanning the field, uh, scanning the field, which uh, a lot of people kind of they they get a little confused by what that means exactly. A lot of times they think that means look up the field. Um, look at the players next to you. Um, so, Bree, you're our guest today. We're going to have to start off with you right here. In your mind, what is scanning the field? Yeah, so I would say yeah, my opinion of scanning the field would be my first go-to thought would be, um, so I like to play a really high line, and when I do play really high, I have to be super aware of what's about to happen before it's going to happen. So um, just kind of like reading the, the body language of the opposing players, of my players, before I get the ball, before they get the ball, um, being very aware of what everyone is and what I think is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think one of the problems that a lot of, a lot of people have when they, when they say that is being aware. And by the way, in your TED Talk, you talked about awareness. And uh, yeah. that was what made me think about because I was I was doing a little research on you and I watched this TED talk that you gave. Uh, gr great, great job, by the way, Thank on you. that TED talk. Uh, that must have been nerve wracking, by the way. Oh, Just like, and, you know, <laughs> nobody knows how this happened. So I literally had a huge game. I had a, we played against Wolfsburg um, that Friday night. 
So I got home Friday night, you know, two in the morning and I drove to my TED talk at five in the morning, did it off the cuff. I thought I was going to have note cards and they shut that down when I got there. So it was, it was really nerve wracking. And I was literally looking at the people and, and if you guys got to, you guys got to check it, check this out because I'm literally looking at the crowd and I was like, what, you no know, one like Brie was like, Hey, how should I dress for this? I'm like, Oh, now I understand. Cause like <laughs> in that TED yeah. talk, people were so like, they were like all professionals and like executives yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> And then you're like, look, I'm a ball player. I don't know what to tell you. Like, we should have a black tie. We should do black tie only. Oh my god! Go. At the end of quarantine, all a black tie or shirt. Yes, on, we'll on have a party. We'll have a big Zoom, a party, champagne, and black tie only for for inside the 18. And I think we should invite everyone who's been on the show from Europe. We've been having all these guests go. from Europe, uh, <laughs> and they can they can stay up because for them it's going to be nighttime, even though for us it'll be uh, in the Day middle dream. of the day. Um, yeah. Sask, any other thoughts on scanning the field? No, I agree with you 100%. You know, it's it's really taking the, that snapshot. You have to be able to use your peripheral vision, you know, see what's going on, both offensively and defensive, defensively. But at the same time, you've said is assessing what you think is going to happen. Because that also, you know, once you scan the field and then you're looking at the play unfold, you know, you have to remember where things were and under what situations and how to, like, kind of, reorganize and everything like that so it's getting it's and it's it's getting really good at taking those quick snapshots and like loading them in your head and then and moving on um and i always like to say like i have like i have eyes in the back of my head you know like i can see so wide like i don't know what my dog is doing over there right now you know so wait which one is that over which one's over there Actually, neither of them. So, oh, okay. <laughs> I just checked. No. <laughs> but Jagger's asleep. And see, he doesn't know I can see him. But my point is, is that we have to constantly be assessing and scanning the field. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you brought up that whole snapshot thing. Um, Bree, one thing I was watching when I was watching some, you know, some footage of you playing with Frankfurt is that you have a really good awareness in regards to spatial awareness of all right, where are my options? Do I have a, a short option? Do I have a deep option? Do I have a long option? That sort of thing. And when Sasuke was kind of bringing up like snapshot, is that something that kind of happens to you where you kind of like each time there's some a possession, you take a snapshot and you kind of use that, that photo memory, that photographic memory to remember that moment for the next play? Yeah, of course. I think that's, I like the snapshot analogy. That's great. I also Going on another one of my t-shirts. <laughs> okay. Sasuke has like four different t-shirts she's got to like I'll give you some others so. <laughs> yeah so I think the snapshot thing is awesome and I also think it comes down to like knowing your players too right so there are certain players that I can't put the ball in space to you know I have to hit their feet so it comes down to that kind of thing too Oh, I totally agree with that. But like, even defensively, like um, when you're scanning the field to organize, there are certain players I know are going to be out of position. Of course. Like, and it's and I hate to say that. Obviously, I'm retired, so nobody can get mad at me. But you know, <laughs> I always knew there were certain things when something was happening over here that I didn't even have to look. And I, I'm not going to call people out by name, but I would be like, you know, cover weak side, push in because I know they're not. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. you know, also know your players. That's a good one. Okay, so so let's bring up Bri, knowing your players. Like Bree, like what are some of the visual cues that should goalkeepers be looking for when they're scanning the field? Like specific ones. Um. Yeah, I would. I would definitely. Uh, you know, when the opposing team has the ball and has possession, if your players aren't side on, or you know, if they have their finger up their nose, we're gonna have some issues, right? So, since I do play really high off my line, I have to be really aware of. You know, is my outside back picking daisies or is she right. tuned in to the switch? You know, so it's, <coughs> you just have to really be aware and um, read the body language. And I really like to know who I'm playing against. So oftentimes I know kind of their tendencies and I've played against the same players for five years. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about that, by the way, if there's a player with their finger up their nose, I think <laughs> speaking of snapshots, there's <laughs> There's the snapshot moment right there. You're like, hey, just by the way, just want to let you know that that outside mid always has their finger up their nose. So yeah. don't worry that about that. That's the PG-13 right analogy that I wanted to use. <laughs> well, you know, hey, uh, I, I think I know where exactly where you were going with that uh, now that you brought up the PG-13 analogy. Um, no, uh, there's a, a lot of tendencies that a lot of players, I think, a lot, especially a lot of young goalkeepers miss from the visual cues is like, 
Where are their hips shaped? Like, are their hips shaped square to you or at their an angle of you? How many times do you see young goalkeepers playing balls that players are not ready for? And if they literally had just taken a snapshot yeah. of seeing their body shape, they would have known that. Yeah. No, absolutely. You know, if you're just in your head going to get this ball and play it out to the other side and that person's just not ready for it or they're facing you with pressure coming onto their back, it should, you know, you have to know what's going on. And But you have to be able to do it fast. It's, you can't take the ball, look, assess. You know what I mean? It, by then, everything's over. You know, you have, to, you, have to, you have to practice it and you have to be fast enough that you, you know, you know, and you're a step ahead. So, yeah. Uh, Brie, I want to have a question for you. That playing that high line, is that a tactical choice on your part or is that on the, your club system's part? Um, it's, well, it's actually like a personal favorite of mine. So I played for UNC and we played three back in college. So I was, you know, always high off my line, trying to cut off any three balls and be another defender, so to say, right? Um, so I, I personally play pretty high and then I, um, with my club now, we have the youngest team in the league. So um, reading the game isn't exactly like my backline strong suit. So <laughs> I've got to help that a little bit by playing a little bit higher. Um, yeah, it's kind of a personal favorite. How, uh, wait, how young are we talking about here? Are we talking about like youth players like coming up? No, or? so like, so my, the average age of my team, I would probably say is 21. So I'm 26 and I'm, the second oldest on my team. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. I feel gosh. like grandma. Wow. Man, yeah. now I feel now I feel ancient. You just said that you just said that right there. I'm not even, um, gonna, I'm not even joining this conversation. <laughs> well, actually, actually I, have, I have a question just to totally go off on tangents. By the way, Brie, we go on tangents all the time. We may get back to this topic. Um, but uh, with the, back to my age. <laughs> <laughs> we're not getting back to your age. With the Frauen Bundesliga, um, is that common? Is that common for uh, teams? Because I know that in the, men's, <laughs> in the men's Bundesliga, it's very common to develop youth players and bring them up early on more so than, than in other countries in Europe. Um, so is that common on the women's side as well too? Um, yeah, and I definitely think it's a, it's a mentality of Frankfurt. So we have definitely in the past three years um, started to develop some of the younger players and it's, it's paying off. We have some of our younger players have been called up to the full team in Germany and um, yeah, we've made huge gains. Look out, the greatest goalkeeper ever just the greatest, signed on. The greatest goalkeeper, goalkeeper ever. coach ever. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're never, never going to miss out to that. Uh, Omar, well, uh, Oh, well, wait. Remember, it's Frankfurt or UNC. Oh, you went to UNC? Okay. Yeah. I'm like, look, I even have your back on that. Like, <laughs> thank you, you thank you. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I got to see this back. I haven't even seen the background yet. Wait, oh, yes, it's UCLA. oh my gosh. Did he put a UCLA one yeah, back? Yeah, I'm like, oops. Like, I, did, you see, <laughs> did anybody notice how I slowly was just like lifting my, my camera up? So it was like <laughs> UCLA in your face the whole time. Oh my God. <laughs> so I was like, so you guys are talking. I was just like lifting up my screen. Up. And Omar just Sorry. screwed it all up. <laughs> Sorry for being late, guys. That's okay. Did I miss anything? I'm, 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 so that's, that's, what, that's what I'm doing. I'm shout out to, uh, to TKI. Are you late, Omar? Are you, did you miss anything? Um, I don't know. You just missed, uh, learning everything about the Frauen Bundesliga in 30 seconds. Uh, oh, so, God. yeah, I know. So you're missing out right there. No, we've been talking about, we've been talking about scanning the field. We'll let you throw in your, your two cents right here. Um, Brie plays a high line. We found out that first off. Um, it's because her team's like 12 years old and, uh, it's also a personal favorite of hers. Cause they had a three back system at North Carolina. See, I pay attention. And, uh, there there you we, go. Le we learned Saskia has got <laughs> peripheral vision with her, with her eyes. Uh -huh. Um, and then we, we've, we've been talking about visual cues now that Omar speaking of visual <laughs> cues. Now I know that Omar's got the right logo up. Um, talk, why don't you, why don't you talk a little bit about the visual cues when you're scanning the field, Omar? Uh, visual cues, visual cues. No, I think, uh, well, uh, is it ha, ha, the Bri Brianne? Brianne? Yeah, uh, Brianne. <laughs> Brianne, I'm sorry. The way I, I read it the way I said it the way I read it. Um, but nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, no, I think, it, I mean, the importance of scanning the field is everything. I think it's, it's um, even, for example, I talk about just passbacks and a lot of kids out there is like, yeah, you can practice in isolation over and over and over chipping balls into people. But can you also practice as a goalkeeper coach too? get those goalkeepers in those game realistic sessions where, 
you're forcing people to put pressure on somebody. Like we talked about gamification, like they get points if they nick the ball off you. And then now that's forcing you to now, before that ball even comes back to you, can we scan and see what's already happening? Is the forward on top of the 18? Maybe this is a first time clearance. Is the forward probably the bottom of the circle? Maybe I can take my touch the opposite way. And then from there, I have a better idea of where to go. But whether it's pass backs, whether it's shot stopping, whether it's cutbacks, always trying to take a picture prior to, you know, going to the situation at hand, taking a picture and scanning what's going on around will help Gee, you. It's almost understand. as if you were listening to the last 20 minutes of the episode. He was, you know what? He, oh, to make, what he was sitting here watching that all, everything you said. He goes, now I'm going to roll in. <laughs> And know everything. <laughs> um, no, it's awesome. <laughs> no, let, let's let's talk. Let's talk about uh, starting position, uh, Bree, because you were talking about the high line, and we were talking about you know how how you feel comfortable with it, especially with the three back system. Um, do you think that your starting position determines how you can see the field? And if you played a deeper position, you'd be seeing the field differently than than when you play it high. Um, I think I don't think it it uh, changes your perspective too much, but I think it could change how you make like take an action right so if you're playing a high line and you see some kind of body language or anticipate a through ball then your action would be kind of more of like a sprinter stance and reading that through ball whereas if you were you know on your goal line you're probably not coming out for the ball yeah yeah um Saskia, we uh we were talking about you were talking about your your eyes the having the, the ability to do that sort of a thing. My concern is like when you're playing a high line, does it make it more difficult to have that peripheral vision because because you're so high up? No, I, uh, what, think, I agree. I agree. Free. I think I don't okay. think so. I mean, I okay. think you're adjusting with the with the ball. So as the okay. ball's coming down, I'm not staying up there. Right. I'm like, you know, I'm going to start to drop. And at the same time that I'm dropping, my crazy peripheral vision that I told you about is like making sure the other side is organized and everything like that while I keep an eye. So like, you know, I don't, I don't think that that makes a difference there. Like, cause like I said, you're floating back with the ball, move forward with the ball. I think you guys are absolutely right. I think one of the th issues that I see, especially with a lot of young goalkeepers, and Omar, I'll ask, ask you about this, is that they have a very difficult time understanding transitional play. You have the ball, we have the ball at a split second. You know, they're, 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 and, and I'm sure Bree can attest to this. They're if you like, you know, playing with younger players, not throwing your players under the bus. I'm saying <laughs> you've, you've played with younger players in the past. Right. Uh, they have the split second to, to have to read it again and then make the determination. But by then, especially, you know, at your level, it's just, it's too late. Right. Right. Totally. Yeah. I think a, a really important point to go off of that is, you know, when you're in goal and we don't have the ball, right. The other team has the ball or we do have the ball. You're always ready. I see it. So I'm the, I'm actually the goalkeeper coach for the under 17 team in my club. And when I watch them play, you know, their arms are crossed. I love they're, it. They're it's chilling. They're just crazy. chilling. And they're like hanging out. Yeah, oh in God. a split second, you know, the house <laughs> on the fire. You know, so it's it's and when I'm in goal, I mean I'm doing my my side to side movement. I'm so ready. It's so exhausting being that ready for 90 minutes. Yeah. yeah but you're step ahead and you have to be. It, you know, you're getting that jump on the through ball. You're getting, you know, like we always say, we want those kids to read it. You 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 can't react. You can't, you know, what is it? Proactive, not reactive. Right. So you gotta, you can't like be flat footed. You can't have your arms crossed. You can't be staring at the sky. Like you have to kind of be biting at the bit to get in there. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, no, I, I, I agree completely. Um, Omar, let, let's talk about scanning the field before your first touch, because I know this is something that, uh, that you've been very big about. In fact, even when we did a, a clinic a few months ago, seems like forever ago. I know. Um, in, um, in lovely uh, Arizona, um, you worked with, because a lot of the players, again, they were trying to, first off, they, I mean, th this is a big, huge pet peeve of men in the youth game. First touch forward every single time, yeah. every single time yeah. it's a first touch forward. Um, and you were talking to them about dropping back, making sure that you see the field before you receive oh, your first yeah, touch. Mostly. So now you have a better, clearer idea of what you want to do. Um, so why, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Uh, no, so what we were working on was obviously creating more depth and creating space for yourself on a pass back. And obviously, I, I, I like to take myself away from the goal to eliminate any issues. Let's say if it goes under my foot or I take a bad touch, at least I have a safety net that if I do take a bad touch, I have the sideline and the, the end line to protect me. Um, so I like to create myself some depth and get underneath. And then once I get 
from there, once I have more time, now I have the ability to one, scan the field and two, know if, okay, if they're coming at me super, super quickly, maybe I can take a one touch clearance from here. But again, just allowing yourself that time and that depth to, uh, to get the pass back and again, be able to scan the field. But one thing that I don't like sometimes is that people will scan the field once they have the ball. And that's kind of like, yes, you can scan the field, but the picture needs to be already, you should already have a picture in your head prior to even receiving the ball. And I think like we talk about, you're talking about Malcolm, it's like a more, it's more proactive goalkeeping than kind of reactive. And I think a lot of young kids nowadays, because we train so much in isolation of, you know, distributing uh, goal kicks or, you know, you're with your friend, you're chipping balls in or you're chipping balls out to your right, left back, because it's so isolated, that technique is not really being fine tuned with actual game style and gameplay. So one, again, I always bring it back to us coaches. How can we create that environment to make it so uh, the stress is authentic and you're actually being forced to work on your prep touch, work on scanning of the field. Um, and I think that is, again, creating depth and creating that space for yourself allows you to build off of the scanning that you've already done prior to receiving the ball. I mean, one of, one of the things I've been doing in isolation, uh, because I've been doing pre, I've been doing virtual sessions in, in isolation. And I actually really enjoy them. Uh, I'm one of those weirdos like that is, uh, I've been giving a visual visual landmarks for players to make sure like in the middle of while, while we're doing any sort of activity like this, okay, what's over blah, blah, blah. And if they can't tell me, that means that they're not really seeing those landmarks and those spots like they would in a game. So do you think that's a great idea? I mean, well, maybe not a great idea. Maybe that was, maybe that was, a, little, that was, that was a little, that was a little full of myself. I mean, do you think no that's, a, do you think that's an idea that makes, that makes sense working? You're working with youth, obviously. So that was a, that, now I put my foot in my mouth on that one. <laughs> the question for me. Sure. Why not? Why don't you take it? <laughs> Um, I think it's interesting. It's a very interesting idea. Okay. Um, I'm a little nervous if you did this on me. I would not <laughs> have a good answer. <laughs> um, okay, well, then let me rephrase it. Okay, so how, yeah. do, you, how do you work with your youngers, your, your, your U17s that you're coaching? How do you work with them too? Because one thing, one thing I liked is but when I was watching a lot of tape of yourself um, is that you have a very good awareness of where to escape. Um, and a lot of goalkeepers don't have that awareness of where to escape. And that's one of the reasons why I've personally been trying to work with goalkeepers on this is because if they don't understand where their, where their players are, where the spaces are that are open, and they don't understand where the oncoming pressure is coming from, they're going to play into a bad situation where essentially we're just going to lose possession again, right? Right. Yeah, so I think it always, like with younger players especially, they need to have a good idea of where they should put the ball like normally so like high and wide is always a great option um so like my goalkeepers always want to kick as far as they can and what happens when you try to do that is you probably just scud it up the middle so uh i'm trying to get them to work on like safe spots for the ball and then i i like to do a lot of things where you know we start on one side and then we change the point of attack and the player that's receiving the ball is constantly moving. So they do have to take that look before they switch yeah. yeah. No, um, I, I, I think that's great. I think that's great. And I think that's one thing that, uh, you know, it's funny. It's like uh, I was just talking. Saskia, she can be very opinionated when it comes to her goalkeepers. Okay. And, uh, and, it's, and it's, it's fascinating to me because a lot of times, I think it's about how, and we've been talking about this a lot on, on the podcast. It's not about what what you're saying, but how you're saying it. And I think that really comes true when it comes to distribution too, because like if you're, you know, showing for somebody in panic, well, what's there going to be their natural mindset? Oh, this is a bad situation. So now we're going right. to rush the play. But if you're calm and collective with it, now they're going to be like, Oh, okay. This person knows kind of what they're doing. Right. Right. What does that have to do with me being opinionated? Well, no, I just, <laughs> like, how do those two things tie together? <laughs> called me going it's, it's called me having a train of thought in the middle of my conversation yeah. uh mike so so one thing i would say too is that like one thing that i've i've been way more open with my goalkeepers is like i want you guys to fail and fail not like obviously put your best foot forward but if you fail don't get so discouraged i want you to understand that when you see ederson when you see a lot of these professional goalkeepers play in the highlights all you're seeing is ederson playing a 60 yard ball to mm -hmm. you know sergio aguero and then him scoring but what you don't see is all the miss, miss passes, misjudgments, the bad prep touch, the one that went under his foot that went out for a corner kick. And then that, you know, led to certain dangers, but 
understanding that in training sessions, that's where you're supposed to be making mistakes. That's where you're supposed to understand your range, understand where your prep touch is supposed to take you. How big is your prep touch? Can you work on your weak foot? So um, one thing I've been doing lately is just like, look, when you step into a session, I know, you know, certain things are going to happen, but at the same time, I want you to roll with the punches and I don't want to get, I don't, I don't want to have you too discouraged. Continuously try and try and try to build that muscle memory so that your prep touch is clean for the weekend. And I think that's something that with, again, social media and with, you know, highlights on, on YouTube and things like that, a lot of kids are kind of misinformed and think that everything has to be perfect. So they're not willing to make those errors or take those risks in training. So I'm hoping, hoping that once we all get back to the field, we can kind of like reverse engineer that and kind of like, you know, re reconfigure the mindset and that approach. Yeah. You know, um, one thing that I think is, is, is a big issue in, in regards to what I'm seeing with young, young goalkeepers is understanding the difference of, of, of possessional purpose and just playing possession. Um, so many goalkeepers out there just think that their team wants them to knock the ball around in the, in the backfield. Um, as opposed to looking for different options of attack. So, um, you know, Saskia, kind of what is, what is kind of that difference uh, in mindset so that you start thinking every time I receive the ball, I'm looking for the next best available opportunity rather than just giving the ball to somebody that's open? Well, I mean, it, it comes with a whole game awareness and a game assessment. It depends on what's happening in the game. You know, yes, a lot of players just get the ball and they dump it off to the, you know, they're back here, you know, now it's your problem. And sometimes, depending on where you are in the game, it calls for you to look high, for you to bypass the midfield and try to spring, spring an outside wing or something like that. That's what it calls for. Um, sometimes gamesmanship, it calls for you to waste time. Uh, sometimes it calls for you just to push every, like, there's so many different reasons to do things. It's not just one way, but I totally agree, agree with you for like, you got to start somewhere. So you got to start with young kids going, you know, high, high and wide is always good. I agree. And then like, okay, let's change the point of attack. You know, let's move the ball around the back. And as they get better and get older and get more um, game awareness, then you can start saying, okay, so why on this, you know, let's change the point of attack, but look up and bypass and, and spring me up. You know what I mean? And so with, with a good, 60 yard ball if you have it in your in your arsenal so you know that comes with um coaches and coaching and yeah. and teaching them when when to do things mike can i show you guys a clip real quick sure you your clips you're, you i know i know I, I tell you i watch so much youtube content that i'm just like saving these and this is exactly so two things you're going to see before i post before i show you one is the decision making they like you said just dumping the ball to somebody and the yeah. second one is okay you got he's in trouble but he put himself in even more trouble trying to play out of it. So this is from the U17, I think, uh, World Cup or the Euros 2018. I thought it was going to be, U17, I it was gonna be one of Bree's U17 keepers. The way you're <laughs> this is from the U17. Like, okay. <laughs> okay, can you see? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So look at how he rolls this. It's um, a little shaky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Oof. So almost, almost pays for it. But like, if you watch, he literally rolls this ball and this guy is just waiting like, all right, you're going to do that. Great. Right. He rolls yeah. it to him. And once he rolls it, he gets the pass back. And then here it's like, as a forward, as, as a goalkeeper, can you scan and see that there are six guys <laughs> on top of your 18, dude? Sometimes <laughs> just get it, get it out. He does. And then he, <laughs> and he, he makes matters worse. He yeah, gets he it passes back. it. <laughs> he and then, it like, I'm like, dude, what are we doing? What, what? As a coach, he's, that'll he's actually trying to hit that guy on the, on the line. Hold on, but that back, though? That back had no business giving him the ball back either. He panicked <laughs> as well, too. But look, what is he supposed to do? What is he? No, who, who, I don't think the back. I would have been like, if I was a back, I'd be like, don't give me that crap. But I would have been like, he, he has a, the keeper has a better chance there just to clear the ball in that situation, clean up the whole situation. Instead, yeah. he tries to go for the other guy standing on the side on the on the touchline. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what ends up happening where us as coaches we're on the we're on the bench and the entire team and coaching staff will look at you and go, What the hell was <laughs> It's like, look, we didn't train that. <laughs> What's it supposed to be like that? I love that look. Oh. There's nothing worse than when somebody gives you that ball, though, that ball though. Like, I mean, I obviously that goalkeeper's at fault for just giving that simple uh, bowl out like that. Just by the way, that's a pet peeve of mine too. And I don't know, Bree, how you feel about that, that giving that square ball that literally doesn't advance the play in any way whatsoever. It's like, why did you do that? And Saskia talks about this all the time about not my problem anymore. Yeah, That's just a not, that's a not my problem anymore ball. Yeah. It's like here, if, if, if this gets, if this gets messed up, it's your fault now. Yeah. Right. It's like, right. 
you're, you're five yards away from me. Number one, get away from him for the defender, you know, for his <laughs> player, but don't get him that ball. Like he's not helping the situation. Absolutely. I completely agree. I also have a big pet peeve with the whole like head coach looking at the goalkeeper coach saying, you know, what did they just do? Well, the goalkeeper coach doesn't look at any other field player and, you know, when they make a mistake and say that's the head coach, it's ridiculous. I can't stand it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh, and also it's almost as if like we have a magic wand or something like that. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Was I playing in the game? I didn't realize <laughs> I was playing in the game. What is, I don't know. I don't know what they did. It was interesting. It's like, what? <laughs> so I found this, I I found this online. Can you yeah. see it? The picture? I can, I can see, I can just see the bottom part see, of it. I, I can't see, see the top part. I can't see oh, the top part. No. Oh, no. Okay. Is that a Brie? Is that a Brie? Is that a Brie caricature? It's like yeah, a big Mickey Mouse glove hands. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Brie, what's the story behind that picture? Uh, I think a fan made it, to be honest. I don't know which fan. I feel bad, but it's kind of cute. <laughs> that's, Sorry, that's... I'm going to do it one more time. <laughs> continue, continue. Don't, don't let me stop you I mean, guys. somebody's that's over there playing with his computer. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Let's let, let's get into this now uh, because we were just talking about mistakes in regards to the the play that Omar was showing us on TV, and I'm sure he's got 17 other clips that he can show us. Uh, oh, I got as, so many <laughs> as well on mistakes. Oh, there we go. Um, what are some common mistakes that the goalkeepers are making when they're looking for options to penetrate? Okay, and and a lot, and not necessarily just tactically, but also technically. I, I'll start right now. I think the one of the biggest options the mistakes that a goalkeeper makes is when they're looking long, they just play a long ball without any idea of what that player can do with the ball once they receive that ball. Yeah, I would totally agree with you. I think um, that's a huge mistake, right? It's just dumping the ball to somebody and it's kind of like, all right, it's your problem now. But I also think at the highest level of the game, the speed at which you can get the ball out of your hands and your feet to the top of the box and then get the ball to that player you want it to get to, you know, if it takes too long, the play's over. So yeah. um, one of my favorite things that I've gotten better at over time is the, you know, come out for a cross, sprint to the top of the box in a full stride, a laser to my forward who's fast as lightning. And, yeah. you know, that was my for favorite me, it's like no better that. feeling than that. That's my favorite thing to do. Yeah. You know? And you already know, like, you, you know, because everybody's like kind of pushed up on you. So, you know, that person's just sitting up there one v one and that ball floats in and you, you it's like, you've already kicked it. It's exactly. like, just start exactly. running. This is just the best feeling. I love that. Yeah. Um, what do you guys, what are your guys thoughts on this? Uh, I, I, this is the number one issue I've been seeing lately in regards to, to players is, their first touch is forward, which is already putting themselves in a disadvantageous position. Um, because when that first touch is forward, they're chasing their touch rather than being able to scan the field. If their touch, if their touch is at an angle, well, now they can open up and now they can kind of see the field. But so many young goalkeepers, their first touch is forward and then they try to repossess the ball. But by then there's already, like you're talking about, Bree, about you know uh, speed of play. By then there's too much pressure coming at you, right? Right. So then you have to scan the field before you get the ball. So you know how much pressure there is and you know how much time you have. So, you know, typically in the Bundesliga, we play against a team who does not play high pressure or they do play high pressure. It's not usually a mix. And I know the, the forwards well enough to know that, okay, is she going to press me? Do I have time? And I like what you said about the forward touch. I don't take forward touches very often. Right. So I almost stop the ball at my feet, take a look, do I just keep possession? Do I press the ball in front of me? You know, then you have more time and options to make a decision. Omar or Saskia, do you guys think that that's a, that's a tactical issue? Or do you think that's more of a technical issue just on the fact that a lot of kids just aren't comfortable with receiving a back pass? I think it's a technical issue. I mean, yeah. you're, you're obviously you're having problems with your first touch. <laughs> you know, if your first touch is like running away from you and you're chasing after it. Um, um, and I agree, like you can't, take whether it's that first touch that's running away from you or two it's too lateral obviously that's a problem that's a huge problem i'd rather run after forward after a ball than try to get myself laterally around it but again i think that you know that that that's technical 100 percent. but you can't then scan the field i think that's what our theme is today like you have to have already known this ball is coming into me, you scan the field, you already should know what kind of touch you need to take on this ball. Like, if I can kill it, if I have 
what if I, you know, have to one time it out? Like you've got to, you've got to be aware of it. You can't make that decision yeah. after you screw up your first touch and then be like, you know, you shouldn't have touched the ball in the first place. Yeah. I think I think uh, most of like the tactic, in my opinion, for some t- uh, for for my my experience, most of the tactical. By, by the way, do you realize that literally your files are still up? Yeah, your emails are on the screen. Your emails are up. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Am I still sharing my screen? You're still oh. sharing your screen. <laughs> no, it's still it's still like the the picture, right? The picture right by behind like, the picture. Like this, like is like a emails. computer and stuff. Like oh boy, that. don't worry, don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll just leave it that. <laughs> no, but I, I think I think that most of like the tactical issues that happen with distribution come from a technical mistake. And like Saskia is saying on the pass backs, if your first touch, which is a technical error, your prep touch isn't clean. I think that'll, that'll really set you, set you behind in terms of understanding where your next pass can go. Cause now you're worrying about the pressure on you versus, you know, scanning the field and seeing what's going on. So as long as you can kind of pair those two together, which is scanning the field. And then from there, knowing where your prep touch is, I think we're good. And I think what, what I think, kind of bugs me sometimes is that I see I, I get it I see a lot of kids go out there and they you know set the ball in the six and they work on these chip and flighted passes which again I'm, I'm all for it like 100% but if your coaching staff and your head coach is saying like an Akron we're playing out of the back those are not going to suit you as well as putting yourself in live situations as often as you can where you're going to get those pre- uh, get that pressure and that live uh, decision making and understanding where your prep that needs to go where the initial pressure is coming from and then once you take your touch where the you know the outlets are going to be and I think, again, um, what can sometimes happen in some team tactics is that you're almost forced to play out of the back. And one, if you're not good at it, you're going to get exposed. But also, two, you're forcing passes. And I think when you start forcing passes, that, that ends up kind of screwing with your, your psyche and then your decision making gets, gets uh, disrupted. I think that is, uh, that's why it's important, obviously, for a coaching staff to, to really implement this kind of, uh, uh, these kind of techniques in, in training. But I do, Mike, you ask and you shall receive. I have another video for you. Okay. I tell you guys, I have, I, I, I watch all the YouTube <laughs> clips and I keep them saved, but. Point of, did you ask? He did. Yeah, he did. I never, I, I don't think I asked. I just think, he I think asked. I just said, I said, I think, and I'm sure, I said, I'm sure Omar's got another 17 clips. Uh, By the way, Bree, did you know you were going to be going to a webinar today? I didn't say that. <laughs> no. <I'm> a, <laughs> Okay. Did you want to? Did you want to share? Bit, did you want to share, Omar? Okay. Yeah. So no, essentially, it's like um, when you play when you're playing a certain system that's forcing you to play, this can happen. This is uh, Barcelona versus Chelsea Champions League youth. You're just putting all these kids under the bus, man. It's just all you. Nah, it's, it's all it's the same puts. one goalkeeper. That was just horrible. So that you're just showing horrible. you're just showing the same kid over and over again getting just. <laughs> like, watch this. Like, what is what is he doing? That's what what, I'm saying, what like, was he, that? Like what is he doing? But also too, like if you're if you're as a coach telling him like can we treat uh, try and play out of the back, and then that's like almost what your job requirement is. Even this one right here, you can you I, I can't even see him trying to chip the ball to this guy. There's no way that six. Well, like yeah, perfect. The guy's actually wearing number six. But like you can, you're gonna chip to number six right here, or just try and play a big one. Like there's yeah, no reason for you to be, force this. Yeah, but kids can't be so literal, and they are, and that's the problem. It's like okay, we're gonna play out of the back, and then and that is all that they heard and know, and they, they can't make their own decisions. Like you as a coach have to teach your kids. Look, there, there are certain situations. With, you know, what is he saying? What is he, he saying? He can't do it. He, I, don't, I don't know. I, I mean, Bree, do you, do you, do you have, like, you, you, you obviously play at a very high level. Um, I mean, what, have you ever seen situations like this where a, a coach? Is, he legitimately get... thought he was going to make that pass. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> he seriously thought he could make that pass. I mean, look, I mean, more power to his arrogance, but I mean, like, you know, uh, better safe than sorry, right, Bree? Right, better safe than sorry. And I also think, I noticed in the last clip, and I think this is really common, is outside backs, should always be sprinting to be in a good position to give you a second option. Yeah. And I didn't see that in either of those clips. And when I play against really good teams like Wolfsburg, Bayern Munich, that's the first thing I notice is I see their center backs and their, their outside backs always sprinting to give the goalkeeper that safe option. Yeah. And I know that was a bad decision from that goalkeeper to try to thread that ball through the middle. But I mean, if he, he had an outside he didn't back, have any other options. Yeah, and he needed to hit a I long mean, ball. I mean, other than play, other than play ball. By the way, yeah, this no. this this poor kid is gonna find this clip online. I know. <laughs> <It's> gonna... <laughs> I mean, he's he like, made the he's mistake. Like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's like three adults were just like, or four adults were just. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just tell them, look, dude, it was educational. Like I needed to show people that. Oh, could you you're, imagine look from the coach at you from the head coach down the bench on that one? <laughs> I can only imagine this guy like makes it to the first team in Barcelona, and like I I make it somewhere eventually, and like they say, hey, well, do you want to bring? Do you want to? <laughs> do you want to bring? Clip? Uh, do you want to bring Omar Zini in? This is a guy who's on social media. You want to bring him in? He wants to be the first team coach at Barcelona. He's like, you know what? I heard about this guy. No. <laughs> he is not going to be my goal. <laughs> when I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. oh, my God. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, an- another situation in regards to scanning the field. Because we've been talking about, you know, just touches on the ground. Um, when you win a flighted ball, this is something I've been working with a lot of young goalkeepers on, is – understanding how to scan the field once you've won a flight of ball. I can't tell you how many young goalkeepers win across and they think their job is done. They literally just stop like, cool. Awesome. I won the ball. All right. Well now what do you do with the ball? You just stand there and now you're looking for options or whatever. Um, how important is it where your hand position is uh, Bree in order to be able to still be able to seal the field once you've caught that ball so that you're not looking down and you can see the field and you can look at for your net, your, your first distribution. Yeah, so it's super important. So I have uh, tons of photos where this isn't always the best thing, right? So where I'm catching the ball and I'm maybe already looking to the player I'm going to play to, um, it's usually a high ball or whatever. Um, but it's super important. But you have to have already scanned the field and know kind of where your players are going to be. And also, you know, you should know the tactics on a corner kick or kind of any kind of shot where your player should be. And, you know, I'm a fan of you get the ball from this side, you go that side. Right. So pretty classic. Yeah. Um, but I do really love to, you know, you win that flight of ball and then you sprint past everybody. And so you just broke the line of their entire forwards and midfielders and then the counterattacks on. And then you play the Tim Howard Al, uh, against Algeria ball where, uh, where Landon Donovan scores. Exactly. The goal and we, and we and we move on um my oh my gosh it's one of the one, one of my favorite clips of uh, of goalkeeping uh ever i'm sure omar's <laughs> got a clip of it somewhere I, I literally just watched that like five days ago so i'm just like i'm on it and i only like the one i forgot the guy's name the one there's only one commentary that i like it's the one who is uh what's the name like the which ESPN guy? guy which guy which guy the, uh, john, I forget strong, his name. john strong john strong no no different he's english Ian anyways Dark? he was like uh oh. maybe and he just like Donovan, he, he screams Donovan's name a certain way. And I'm like, I can't watch it. And any other, any other commentator it has to be him. But well, a couple of weeks ago, we did that inclusion <laughs> and representation episode, Omar. So I don't know. You should uh, <laughs> backpedal that statement. We'll see. But uh, no, I think uh, to Bill and Bree's point, I think the one thing that I do prior to setting up my corner kicks is I'll put, obviously, I usually put a person who's kind of like zoning the, the top of the six, one person on my po- near post, one person on my far post, and then everyone marking up and one person zoning the top of the 18. And then once I have that one person zoning on the top of the 18, we have that one forward who doesn't know how to header a ball is going to be a liability. I say, go up there, stay on the corner, stretch them out a little bit and look for the outlet pass. So prior to even me catching across, I already know where my option is going to be. And I think that's, again, it's, it's pr- being proactive as a goalkeeper and understanding where you want to put certain people and where you, what tactics your team plays. And I think that is also super important to understanding where you're going to scan and where your next pass is going to go. Yeah, Saskia, were you ever, when, when you were playing, were you ever actually looking to see if that player was specifically there or you just pretty much knew where they were going to be based on, based on the system? Based on I'd the like system. to say, like, I was, I like, caught the ball first. I am a ball. I already knew. There is a banner of me at Rutgers, and this is why I was sitting here laughing. So it's on the side of the stadium. And then I'm not trying to pat myself in the back or anything. I'm just saying I'm very honored about it. And stuff. it's like three stories. So I'm really happy. I'm so not looking at the ball, catching it. I'm like this. I'm just like you said. I'm like, I'm like looking up for you. It's like the worst photo technically. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, it looks like I'm like, I, I don't know. I took out a rebound. And I'm like, <laughs> like, like feel, I swear. So I'd like to say, no, I never did it. But obviously it's three stories. So I wasn't yes that. And I well, think one of the big things that I like to say I had already caught the ball. I was bringing the ball down, already looking, but I really don't think that. Uh, yeah. Back. Um, yeah, but we have to be hard on our kids to catch the ball first. Yes, you should have already scanned the field before this cross comes in. And and another reason for that is because in order to understand your spacing and where to, where you're going for the cross, so you should have scanned the field and catch the ball first. It's the same as a wide receiver in football or anybody like that. Catch the ball before you try to run up, run into the end zone. 
Um, I, th I think you brought up a really good point I just to interject real quickly. And that is that how many, the most kids are just focused at when there's a corner kick or when there's any sort of, any sort of dead, dead ball situation, they're focused on the play of the dead ball. They're not focused on the rest of the space of the game or where their team is going. If there's going to be a counter. I always think, and I, cause I know you did because you said you love this play. I always know it's that my, Somebody's up top one v one, like I all because I love that play. But yeah, you have to know where people are. You can't just sit here and focus on the corner kick. You have to organize. You have to do everything. Take that snapshot, then move forward. Yeah. Um. So what from a technical standpoint, and and Bree, I'm gonna, you know, uh, go this direction with you because uh, I'm gonna say this is just a every once in a while, not all the time. Uh, yeah. most of, but at least you had to, at least you had it in front of you. At least it wasn't up here. Like yeah. at least you, you can still see the ball because what I was trying to get out in regards to hand position is how many goalkeepers, they catch the ball. And because their nose is in <laughs> front of the ball, you know, they literally are looking like this up when they're catching the ball. So now they have to, once they've caught it, now they've got to look down and now they got to see the field. So it's like almost like losing sight of your field that you've just scanned and then having right. to start all over again. Right. So right. is it, so should you, where should you catch that ball basically in your mind? Yeah, so that would be like a timing issue, right? Yeah. Um, you never want to be catching. I mean, it's similar to baseball, right? You don't really want to be catching the ball behind you. Um, you want to be able to see the ball and most of what's going on in front of you at the same time. Yeah. yeah well, uh, Mike, I think uh, you, you, want, you want to be careful too, I think in terms of like finishing out one progression and finishing out one thing before going to the next. And I think we talk about it even in, you know, even in our training sessions where sometimes you have one action and then you pop back up to the next action. It's like, catch it, see it all the way through, you know, finish that, finish that progression and then get back up and go to the next thing. So it's just making sure you're on, uh, obviously the hand-eye coordination is one action's completed. Then you go to the yeah. next one. And I think same with, same with crossing too. That's why, again, we talk about scanning and understanding the pictures prior. So you already have a, not a detailed picture, but an idea of what you're going to see. So, okay, I'm going to finish this one, but I already have an idea of what's, what's coming next but i won't take my eyes off this until i finish this get it secure it go to the next thing and now you have a better idea of what's the what where the now, next outlet pass is going i agree with you 100 you find that in training too so when i'm training my kids and stuff like i'll have like let's say it's like a multiple act activity drill like you have to get to your footwork then you have to make a, a just a volley say do something in my head then you have to make a collapse head or something like that like they're ahead of themselves. They're not focused on their footwork because they're worrying about getting the volley. They're not focused on ke catching the volley correctly or they catch it and they give me a crappy ball back because mm -hmm. they want to get down from the collapse time. And I'm like, one thing at a time. Please, just one thing at a time. Focus on yeah. your footwork. Proper stance on your volley. Give me a good pass back and then go get your um, get the collapse time. And I think that that lays into that. You know, As long as in training, as we understand, look, the most important thing is that you catch that cross. Yep. Like then we'll deal with the counter attack, but bring the cross down. Yeah, like, that's I, that's. Oh God, Mike. No, 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 Omar, go ahead. I, I, yeah, that's one thing. That's one thing I say in my sessions too. Is like I and I picked this off of a coach that I saw on YouTube. I forget. I think it was James Hallman, and he said that he's like, I want quality on the ball, and every time the ball comes to you, you see it all the way through. Hold that half second like you, like you would in a game. Is really develop those good habits, and I kind of picked off that to my goalkeepers as I say, look. I know you want to run through this drill and I know you want to do it at, at a <laughs> speed, but finish one action. And after you do it, then we look at the speed in between from one movement to the next. I don't care about catch and move. I want you to catch see it all the way through. Mm -hmm. And then once you catch it, throw it back to me, then you work on the speed. That's where I want the speed in between it. So really see it. And then after you catch it and that progression is done, that's where the speed comes into play. And too many times I see guys who are doing, who are working on the spin technique or working on low balls and going like right, left, right, left. And as coaches, it's like, I'd rather you go down with like a proper technique and like full speed, get it, see it, throw it. And then once you do that, engage your core or if you want to spin, whichever one you want to get up quicker to go to the other side, spin and get up. And then we work on that again. So it should be quality first and then speed. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I agree completely. And I think that feeds into, into scanning the field too, because if you develop bad training habits, it's going to translate into the game absolutely and, yeah you know and and Bree, do you think a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that just you know obviously you're, you're coaching youngers right now um they just want to and i i tried to bring this up with a goal with a goalkeeper yesterday and i said the session's not about me like i i don't care that you're you're not here to make me feel good about myself and like if your mindset is like i want to do this right so that he's happy it's like well that, that's not why that's not why we're here you know so do you think that's kind of one of the issues with 
with, with developing these bad training habits is that goalkeepers have been, t- been kind of taught subconsciously that like, I just want to make them happy. So I'm going to try to do things as quickly as possible and, and get the whole thing done. So I would, I would give two kind of examples. So my first kind of cool thing about being able to coach the under 17s is they're actually my ball girls during my home games. Hmm. So they're standing awesome. next to my goal while I'm in goal. And, you know, if I make a good save, they're the first ones to cheer me on. Or if I don't make a good save, you know, we talk about it on Monday at training. So it's super cool to be able to do that and they get to see firsthand, you know, you know, Omar, you said that your guys are watching, you know, these professional goalkeepers and aspiring to be like them, but it's a huge jump. So for my U17s to be standing by my goal, it's really not that big of a jump for them. So that's super cool. But then to your point, Mike, I would say, I, I don't know if it's all their fault. So I have found in my, you know, 10 years of very high level soccer that goalkeeper training needs to change in the sense that we do too much and there are too many like multi ball drills. So it turns into this ball, that ball, this ball. And then you have to give each ball less and less effort to get to the next ball. So I find myself in training, you know, if I need to go to my left, I just do enough to get to it. And then I give it all I have on the last ball. And I think that that needs to change. And the mindset should be, if you don't make that first ball perfect, you don't get the second ball. No. Yeah. I yeah, love it. yeah. Again, yeah. Again, like I said, I think all four of us are saying the same thing. Like, you got to, it's got to be quality. Yeah. It's got, and like, and you know, kids get into that mentality of speed makes, makes, in their mind, the faster they go, the harder maybe we think they're working. Right. You, know, you know, I'm putting all my effort and I'm doing really, really fast. When we are also going, I, I just want good technique. I want good technique. Like, it just, you know, just because you're working really hard doesn't mean you're doing it right. So, like, slow it down. Get quality. Quality. Yeah. No, that that really is, by the way, that that whole idea with the, with the goal. I mean, I feel like every academy should do that. That's awesome. Was that your choice, Bree, or was that was that uh, the club's choice to it's do the that? The club's choice, yeah. So I think it's awesome. What yeah. they're your ball girls? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we have our younger. We have at the Bulls. We have our younger kids go to our older girls' games and everything like that. You know, it's cool. Yeah. Um. All right, guys. Well, we're 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 getting close to an hour right here. So uh, let, let's try to just uh, wrap up. I'll, I'll last a few of these ideas right here. Um. This is something that comes up to me all the time, and especially it comes from parents a lot of times who I'm trying to educate as much as possible. Um, is, is there a right or wrong way to scan the field? In my opinion, there is no wrong way to scan the field. I think it's, it's a personal preference on whether you like to look high first, whether you like to look low first, whether you look wide. Um, you, you big time professionals over here, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Don't do it after the play. <laughs> I mean, obviously you can still do it, but I think what we've all said this whole time is you've got to be ahead of it. You've got to have already scanned the field, whether it's on a back pass, whether it's on a cross, whether it's on, you know, through balls, defensively, anything. You've got to have already done it before the situation happens because then then you, you can't take that much time. You want to be able to understand what's going on. Yeah. You don't want to be on your heels. Yeah. <clears throat> Bree, anything to add? Yeah, I completely agree with that. I don't think there's a wrong way to scan the field. I just think it takes experience and that's a goalkeeper's best friend, right? It's time and learning through some different situations and making different decisions. Yeah. Where they can all do that drill, you know, the one, what is it? I make my keepers tell me what's over there on the shelf when they're catching the ball over here. Is that what you do, Mike? <laughs> wait, wait. Your oh, drill. No, no my drill. That's not that. It's not, it's not over the shirt. <laughs> No, it sounded like. No, there's landmarks. And then I'll call out in the middle. I'm like, I'm like, what was over to the right? And if like, they can't tell me that like the table was over to the right. Like, I know that they're not seeing that part of the field. You got to get creative during virtual isolation sessions. Okay. It's not, it's not, not the most apt environment. <laughs> not a lot of chasers I've got there. I can have their, their parents do it or, or sibling, which I've had have actually had done. Uh, except so sometimes the parents are a little big and uh, so it's a little scary with some of these these kids. <laughs> yeah. you know, I love uh, making fun of you, Mike. <laughs> I know. It's a good time. Uh, uh, Mike, I think uh, the only thing I would say is that I think from, I, I always talk about my own experiences. And for me, sometimes I've had those instances where the picture that I saw when I scanned prior to receiving the ball was not the same picture that I, that I saw when I took my prep touch and was ready for 
to, for an outlet pass. So what I would say is, is be, be open and willing to obviously scan, but also once you receive that back pass, don't be surprised after, if, if after your prep touch, the right winger that you thought was going to be open, their left back step to him or to her. And because of that, now you have to boot it away. So it's like being proactive, but also to understanding that you always have to have that kind of emergency type of distribution and situation where it's high, wide, and far, mm -hmm. or even out of bounds sometimes to get yourself out of that. So always have that wild card in your back pocket because um, I've had those instances before where I get that back pass. I saw my right uh, midfielder was open. I took my, my prep touch outward. And then when I did that, I realized, oh, no, that, you know, the left back was converging on my right back. Okay, this one's probably going to put it, I'm going to try and put it into that pocket just in, set, uh, just in case. So what I'll do is uh, obviously that, that scanning, when you look up after your prep touch, confirms what you saw or it's completely opposite of what you saw. But you always, always, always be safe and have that one little thing where it's emergency ball played, in, played into space. And at the end of the day, when, you, when your team watches the footage, they're not going to think about, oh, remember that one time when Omar hit that ball into that you know, pocket of space that went out for a throw in the deep corner? No one's going to care, but someone will care if you try and make something happen and try and force a pass. Yeah. And then people will, people will talk more about that. So I think, again, people need to understand that it's the holistic approach of the game versus trying to win just that moment. Yeah. yeah. No, you have, to be, you have to be able to adapt. Yeah. Um, last thing I, I want to bring up uh, before we wrap up here, guys, tendencies. Uh, how can we – what advice do you guys give – young goalkeepers out there to understand how to read tendencies of players, whether that's their team, whether that's the other team. Um, is it just game film? Should it be being done uh, during the game? Um, should it be all of the above? Um, whoever wants to take it. So sure. I will say, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Omar. <laughs> no, it's your episode. You go. Um, I would say that there, you know, in my experience, there are not, you know, every player is unique, but I would say that there are a general, you know, forms or molds of different players. So you're going to have the fast athletic outside back that is usually a little on the lazy side or not as smart as reading, as reading the game as the more as the slower older. <laughs> So you just have to know. So my outside back is super fast. She's always out of position. She can recover. Um, and then like on the other side of that, there are just a handful of type of forwards, right? So you have some that want to attack you in the air, some that want to attack you on the ground, some that can shoot from distance. And it's just reading their body language and you just get better at it with experience. Yeah. So Omar, do you believe in that? There stereotypes. So this is actually a, a situation <laughs> where stereotypes actually works uh, – in your favor. So, uh, yeah, that, that honestly, that I never thought about that before. I'm just going to start stereotyping, uh, <laughs> the different positions. <laughs> no, but Mike, Mike, I think, uh, to build off that point, I'll tell you two stories. One is I had this, uh, there was this kid that I played against and Roberto, uh, so, something Luna and he played for FC Dallas. And I just knew that he was one of those guys that wasn't the fastest, but he had a mind. So meaning that the stereotype of, of the, the person who has to, read plays to make up the ground because they're not quick so in my head I always thought you know what this guy's really really smart so even though he's walking away from me I know for a fact he's looking in his peripherals if I'm going to play my right or left back so right right away I already like you said stereotyped that, that person I already knew that that's what they were looking for so for example Karius in the Champions League final against Real Madrid Kareem Benzema is one of those players I mean he's, he's obviously very quick he's very uh, technically sound but he's also a guy who's like in terms of IQ, it's, it's through the roof. And that's what's kept him at the highest level. So when he's walking away from Karius and Karius is trying to hit that outlet pass down the middle, he, all he has to do is use his IQ and his peripheral, stick out his leg. And now we know the rest is history. The ball goes in the goal. So that's what I mean, though, is that like while we are also scanning the field and looking at options and things like that, the forwards are doing the exact same thing. And sometimes they may show you that in film and say, hey, this forward, when he walks backward or he walks away from goal, he's baiting you to pass that ball. Don't play that. Or, for example, we're going to put a six right here and our right back, our left back right here. The six, we're not going to ever play you the ball, but you're going to be the bait. We're going to have you step into this space so that our left back creates space and has time to receive the ball. So it can work from both, uh, both sides in terms of the, uh, the scouting. But from the goalkeeping side as well, you got to have this ability throughout the game to be not just focused on what's happening, uh, obviously, in the holistic approach of the game, but what's happening in personalities and what these personalities are looking for. I think that's huge. 
And I think especially too, um, that'll really give you a leg up in, in terms of your decision making prior to even the situation happening. Wow. All right. I, I think this is a, that's a great way to end on right there. That uh, that was quite a uh, quite a speech right there. Actually, <laughs> literally didn't know where to go from, from there. Sorry, I'm just totally I, I was totally distracted by literally your screen is files of yours. Breeze <laughs> animated caricature. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Um, all right, uh, guys, uh, we're, we're going to start wrapping this episode up right now. Um, thanks, Bree, first off, for taking all the time with us, uh, even though it's late at night. I hope this has been an enjoyable experience uh for you and uh you know one of the one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on the show is we've been trying to really showcase you know um that there's a lot of talent out there outside of the united states um there's a lot of young girls out there who they only see the girls in, in nwsl or the women playing in nwsl and they don't realize that there's a whole world out there so we've been trying to showcase a lot of women out there like yourself who, who've made those decisions to to play overseas in a different environment a little bit out of their com- uh you know their their comfort factor um, and, and make it happen for themselves. So if, if there's any, you know, young, young women out there or, or men or goalkeeper coaches or whatever that want to reach out to you, uh, where's the best place? Um, I'm, I'm pretty re- easily reachable on all social media. Um, I, I think if you reaching out to me on Instagram was pretty easy. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, try yeah. To respond that I can. Uh, awesome. And that's just at, it's at Brie Heberlin, right? Yeah, at Brie Heberlin. Awesome. Cool. I, uh, I will say, I will say when Mike, when you were talking about right when it started, when you said, uh, oh, you just missed Bree talking about the, uh, the Bundesliga. I was like, oh, okay, my bad. And then I looked up her name and I'm like, oh, maybe that's just like, I don't know if that's her last name, but maybe she's on Hertha Berlin. So maybe that's why, like, that's her like username. <laughs> so I was just like, so oh like come to find out it's not. So I just wanted to uh, throw that story out there. Cause I was looking, I'm like, is that her last name for real? Or is she just using like an actual like tag? To- <laughs> oh my God. That is the, that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. But I'm not wrong. I mean, that, that could be that, honestly, that if you were to say, no, that's actually like what I was going for. Then I think most people would be like, yeah, that's, I would have been fooled too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, on that note, guys, you can reach Saskia Weber at Saskia underscore Weber. <laughs> you can reach Omar Zini at greatest goalkeeper coach in the world. Ever. Ever. Or Pro GK Academy underscore. The uh, worst part about this is that people who haven't heard the other episodes are going to just think that I'm just like this narcissistic <laughs> dude who just, I, I, I feel weird every time you bring that up. All right, well, maybe we'll, we'll phase it out. All right, well, maybe we'll, yeah. <laughs> I th- I I, th- I think people will figure it out that it's being done all all in jest. Um, yes. You know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you remember contacted inside the 18 media. That's the number 18 media.com. If you have a guest suggestion ah! or a topic suggestion, um, if you, uh, if you lose Saskia Weber, uh, feel free to reach out to contact also, um, or at goalkeeper podcast on all social media platforms, guys, this has been actually amazing. Absolutely. This was made my afternoon. Uh, thank you so much guys. All That's right. all the time on inside the 18. We're Bye. out later guys. Later. See you guys. Later. Yeah!